welcome to Dos America. Hi everybody, welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. Thank you very much for joining me. Today we're gonna to be looking at stuff that's good for beginners and also for people who've been playing for a while. Some right hand exercises, or left hand if you're a southpaw, for just getting the most out of the engine that drives your rhythm. Whether it be strumming, or flat picking, or a combination, and show you some little fun things you can do to get them all tuned up and working together. But before we go any further, I wanna say a big shout out to one of my patrons on Patreon. Tom Corrigan. Tom, thank you very much for becoming a patron and for supporting what I do. From everything, the music, the video, everything, my patrons help make this stuff happen every single day. And Tom, I want to thank you very much for being a part of my art. And to all my patrons, thank you. Thank you very, very, very much. Now, for those of you who are wondering what Patreon is all about, you can go down here to this link, patreon.com slash bingfutch. Go check out the uh, featured tag section in the open house. Download to your heart's content and experience what Patreon is all about. It's like a subscription service for all of my music, video, books, CDs, tablature. Everything I've done can be yours for $5 a month and new stuff that happens every single week. Check out patreon.com slash bingfutch and explore and see what you think. Tom, again, thank you very, very much. So here we'll be talking about some exercises for your strumming hand, whichever hand that might be. We're gonna start off with very, very basic things quarter notes, eight notes, and sixteenth notes. So whatever you're doing, forget about your fretting hand for a little bit here, and we're just going to strum open, starting with quarter notes like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We have our quarter notes and our count four beats per measure, quarter notes. Then we'll go into eighth notes. We take each one of those quarter notes and we split them in half to get two eighth notes. So now instead of four notes per measure, we have eight notes per measure and we use the word and so we know the difference between the first note in that pair of eighth notes and the second note. The second note gets the and. So we add that to each one of the one, two, three, four counts and we end up with this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Let's compare that to the quarter notes. One, two, three, four, eight notes. One and two and three and four and quarter. One, two, three, four, eight notes. One and two and three and four and. And then we can take each one of those eighth notes and split them in half and get two sixteenth notes, which means for those two pairs of eighth notes, or that, that one pair of eighth notes, we now have four sixteenth notes in the spot where those two eighth notes were sitting, which also means that we've got four sixteenth notes in the place of every quarter note. And we have to add E and A uh to the mix. So every single one of those notes has its own unique and individual identifier. One E and a uh, that takes care of one quarter note. Two E and a uh, takes care of the second quarter note. Three E and a uh, takes care of the third quarter note. Four E and a uh, takes care of the fourth quarter note. So all together, one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a, uh, one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to run all of these together, quarter note, eighth note, and sixteenth notes, one measure of each, and we want to keep them consistent, the same distance apart, and try not to speed up on the sixteenth notes because that happens to be what uh, a tendency that a lot of people fall into. 
So we'll start off slow like this. One, two, three, four, eight notes. One and two and three and four. Sixteen. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E. Back to quarter. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. I'm just gonna repeat this over and over again. I want to point out that as we go through these, you can still feel the one, two, three, four count no matter what you're playing, like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That quarter note count is going to be consistent in the background of everything that we do here. And that helps us line up each one of those measures so that we're not speeding up and slowing down, as long as you can hear the quarter note inside of that. Um, the 16th note, which you can also do, is play, remember we've got four groups of four 16 notes. If you play the first note of that cluster of four a little bit louder, than the rest of them, you'll actually be able to feel and hear the quarter note count so that you don't get lost in the mix like this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... Notice that my head's doing the one, two, three, four count. That's a head fake. So you can tap your foot, you can move your head, you can move your body, and incidentally, the more you move your body, the more you'll actually feel the beat. And the more you feel the beat, the less you'll have to worry about the count, and the more you'll be able to focus on just playing from your heart, from your gut, if you will. So again, that cadence is gonna be one measure of quarter notes, one measure of eight notes, and one measure of 16th notes. Three measures in total that you'll repeat over and over again. One, two, three, Four. One and two and three and four and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Try it at different speeds, but I really recommend doing it slow when you first start off. Somewhere around 67 to 69 beats per minute, and that makes you go nice and slow so when you're playing with those 16th notes you sort of have to wait and be patient before you hit the next one and patience is really a part of the game here because it's very very easy to speed up but it is very very difficult to play slow so the slower you play the more you'll be able to calibrate your inner clock and make this thing work for you 16th notes are uh, really what we're using an awful lot when we're playing fiddle tunes so when I've been playing fiddle tunes, often I've got a 16-note strum happening over here, like this. That's all 16 notes. But because that is largely going to be the smallest subdivision that we tend to do on the mountain dulcimer, you can pull anything out of the 16th notes by using sustained notes, sustained strums, and accents and rests to get what you're looking for. Check this out. You can get louder and softer. Now notice when I'm playing some of these quarter notes, I uh, take my pick and I lift it up off the string so you don't hear me going back and forth with those 16th notes. But notice my hand keeps moving.
and you can get a lot of really different types of rhythms when you're doing that. So if you just kind of think about the 16th notes and then lower and raise your pick, uh, you'll be able to start, stop, and restart your engine over and over again when you're playing fiddle tunes. When it comes time to simply play a couple of half notes or four quarter notes, you can change your strum a little bit and get that in there. Mixing and matching, of course, uh, to make a variable rhythm that, again, you can just kind of go from your gut. Think about when you're like driving in traffic and you're stuck in traffic and you've got your hands on the wheel, your favorite songs on the radio, and you're the drummer. You're just beating on that steering wheel and you're not thinking quarter, eight, sixteen, rest, accent. You're just going pop, 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 And chances are you probably know these solos just as well as the drummers who played them originally. You're not thinking about it, you're just simply feeling it. And ultimately, that's what you want to do when you're playing the mountain dulcimer. You just want to feel the rhythm and go with it. The one rule I tend to follow is one strum per melody note. The melody is going to let you know what the rhythmic fingerprint of a particular tune is going to be. A good example of that would be Norwegian Wood by the Beatles. If I just stuck to a basic strum, and, and that's a three-quarter tune. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I might use a strum like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Without the accents, without me playing things a little bit louder than everything else, you're just going to end up like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, da 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, da 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 That's going back and forth between quarter notes and eighth notes. So you're just putting the accents in there and maybe taking that pickup a little bit off of the strings so that you can get a different kind of a flow. So I would go into the song like this. Accents on the downbeat on one. Now if I kept that up while playing the tune, I would be hitting all three strings every single time. And if I play the melody, it would sound like this. recognizable as Norwegian wood, but it's really busy. It's got a lot of rhythm going on there that doesn't really need to be there because if we take away our bass and our middle string, we're left with this. And we all know that that's way too many notes that the melody actually goes like this. So how do we get that without losing our rhythm? We use selective strumming. All you have to do is when the melody comes to a, a resting point or a sustaining point, then you just ignore, uh, ignore or avoid, ignored, I made up a new word. You avoid that melody string and focus your strumming on the bass and on the middle string, and that ends up sounding like this. It can be tricky, so there's a good little exercise for this. Put your thumb or index finger on the 6th fret on the melody string. Pull that C natural in there. It sticks out like a sore thumb because it's not in the key of D major. And practice aiming your pick towards the bass in the middle string and make sure that you don't hit the melody string or that C will ring out. And only when you want to, Hit the melody string and bring that C into the picture.
It's a good practice and it clears things up a bit. I love the drone as much as anybody, but all drone all the time doesn't give you a whole bunch in the way of dynamics. You've got this drone going all the time. So by um, getting off of that a little bit, you get some dynamics in play, and you also don't chop up the melody into itty bitty pieces. So that's kind of fun. All right, uh, another thing I'm gonna show you here are some flat picking exercises. So this is strumming when we go across the strings all the time. Flat picking is playing individual notes, getting in there and picking them individually. And that is not as hard as it looks for you beginners out there, but it does take a little bit of practice and you want to get your muscle memory in tune to uh, where those strings are located so that you hit them and don't miss them in air strum. So start off with a basic roll and that's going to be going from melody, middle, bass, and then back to middle and then back to melody like this. Now right now I am going outward strokes only. I'm picking outward. Every single time I'm going outward. And that's a good way to start just to make sure you've oriented yourself with where the pick needs to be and where the strings are located. And this is going to be different for different mountain dulcimers with fretboards that are different widths. Some have very wide fretboards and some are very narrow. So you're going to have to calibrate yourself with each of the widths of your uh, mountain dulcimers if you've got a number of them with uh, varying fretboard widths. After a while though, you'll start using an alternating pick direction, going back and forth, and that typically is going to work with 8th notes and 16th notes going like this. And when you do that, the question might arise, which way should my pick be facing? And am I going in or am I going out? And the bottom line is, don't worry about it. Just keep going in, out, in, out, or is that out, in, out, in? Go out, in, out, in. And as long as you are always going from one side to the other, you don't have to worry about it. Your pick will be on the right side of the string that it needs to be as you go back and forth. You can also roll to the outside only. You can also go inward only. And then there's cross picking, which for us is not really that difficult. It just means hopping over the middle string and going from bass to the melody. Ah, it's the time waiting theme. Once you practice doing the flat picking and hitting all the strings and then try some cross picking and some different patterns, don't worry about what pattern to play. Play whatever you feel like it when you're doing your practice time. Play however you feel and then start to mix that up with some of your strums. You also don't need to always play strums or play multiple notes. You can follow one string up or down the fretboard wherever you want to. And this is a great practice for maybe the end of your rehearsal time with your mountain dulcimer where you don't have any agenda, you just want to kind of pick around and have some fun. So what you can do here is just simply noodle, just sort of discover what's happening. Take a little adventurer's journey down towards the nut, back up towards the bridge, across the strings, 
and do whatever your gut tells you to do. Strum, pick, flat pick, hop over strings, follow one note, and then follow one uh, uh, string course up and down, and just have a little uh, safari, if you will. they all have different feels to them. Strumming across the strings feels one way. Picking an individual note and following it feels another way. And then your arpeggios and, and uh, doing your rolls through chords feels another way entirely. you do that you're gonna be training your hand you'll be training your hand your right hand and your left hand really to work in concert together and once you get that down you're gonna find that creating your own rhythms and uh, supporting the songs that you play in tablature will be a lot easier and of course I'll have a lot more of that type of stuff available to you as we head on down the road and into the new year so I hope this has been helpful work with a metronome as well when you're doing a lot of these rhythms especially your cadence of the quarter notes the eight notes and the 16 notes set it at 67 69 beats per minute that clicks gonna give you four four time and also see if you can find a metronome that will or I'm sure you'll be able to find a metronome that's got three-quarter time six eight time 12 eight time and learn how to play in different time signatures because that's going to become very very handy and helpful to you uh, down the road <laughs> So I hope this has been helpful, whether you're a beginner player or a player that's been hanging out for a while and maybe you've hit a plateau and you're looking for something to do to really energize your strumming and picking hand. Take some of that stuff, work with it, work with your metronome and explore at the end of every rehearsal and just see what you can do to fine tune your rhythm mechanism. Thank you again for tuning in everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>